Check. I believe in myself, I'm believing in you To do anything that you set your mind to I remember like it's yesterday I was in seventh grade Now I'm looking at a hard work's pay, man Tell you it ain't easy When the work's piling up and the teacher's riding up And the pressure got you caving in When the time's getting rough, gotta keep looking up You got the power, it's deep within Our parents invested in us And they wouldn't even do it if they didn't have the trust the money and the thought and the feeling that we're gonna make him proud. You can do it, you just gotta have the guts. I gotta make mama proud, daddy proud, grandma proud. Don't forget my uncle Luke, especially my cousins too. We have a reason to bang in our chest today. We are the permanent best. We're here to stay. <laughs> My name is Empress and I will be your friend for the day. I will be that big sister. I will be that auntie that says the youths must talk up. Talk up you, Miss Effie. Talk up you. Tell us some of the issues that the young people are facing, especially grade seven. What are some of the issues? Well, well, um, some of the issues that are affecting our young youth these days or aggressive music and stress. How many of you go through stress? Lord. Oh my. How many of you don't know how to deal with your stress? What does aggressive music do to the youths? How does it affect you if it's aggressive? The type of music that the children listen to now, it changes, it changes them. They have the bad habits. Like they learn something from the music, like fighting, doing um, sexual activities, and others. Most of us as youths, we don't accept ourselves for who we are. Most of us try to be other people. We try to spend most of our time being like others, where we don't accept ourselves for who we are. Because God made us special, and he made us beautiful and unique just the way we are. And what I want to say is that there is nothing wrong with wanting to be like someone. Nothing is wrong with wanting to emulate someone. But the problem is who you emulate. And you have, must have your objective as to why you emulate that person. Example, my role model is Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Why? Because he spent his entire life trying to empower youths to rise up and accomplish what they will. My issue is facial discrimination or feature discrimination, rather facial. Facial and? Features, how you look. Let me sit on, talk up. <laughs> um, you see me, I'm a Rastafarian, and because I have locks, or I believe in different things, my skirts or what I wear have to be seven inches below. So people um, discriminate me and say bad things about me because what I believe in and what I look like. We have to learn to start respecting each other's ability or right to freedom of expression and religion. When I was start, just started this institution, students in my class used to trouble me about my luck. I was raised as a Rastafarian, as a Yoka, in primary school. The student used to tell me that lock, my lock was stink, it had lice in it. And one day after the day that um, the day that Jesus GSAT exam results was to come out, I tried to kill myself because students caught lice and trained my hair. And then they start to create a crowd, a scene around me. So I feel the way left out. So I went in the bathroom and tried to kill myself. However, in primary school, I got, I got counseling. In high school, I started in grade seven. Students used to tell me that I'm not pretty enough. And that I should cut off my ear. And when I did cut my ear, students used to tell me that I'm not pretty, I shouldn't cut my ear. I know that I'm not my head tough and my head dry. And they said that I should cream my ear. And I tell them in the first place, I shouldn't tell them to cut my ear. If I didn't, 
look pretty because I am who I am. My mother and my father is a Rastafarian, and I think that I should grow up on my hair. You all right? It's all right to cry, because me I cry too, because I'm kind of tough about myself. An issue that we as youth face today is peer pressure, and it is a, it's a very burning issue that we youth face today. We mostly find peers pressuring their other peers to visit a guy's house or your boyfriend's house. They're mostly pressuring us to do this because some of them, they, they don't know what to do, they, they have no self-confidence, and they, they themselves were pressured by others, so they're pressuring others to let them feel what they are going through. Really. Um, issues that we're facing as youth right now is bullying, and you have cyberbullying, which is a wide range underneath social media, where people who have low self-confidence and so forth would go up on social media to put nude pics and so forth to get attention. My issue is child abuse and child negligence. Many persons, especially those who they dropped out of school, those parents, young parents, who were not ready to deal with children, they were not ready to sustain or maintain a child or were educated to maintain that child. Therefore, they abuse that child when they cannot maintain themselves or the child. I know that there's abuse in my community, but persons know but do not tell the police or tell anyone else. Why aren't they telling the police? Because they don't want people to get vexed with them and don't talk to them or uh, threaten them and let people come and kill them. As he stated, I know of a case in my community where this young lady is abused, but her cause of abusing is her parent. Her parent sits at home every day and send the child to school, and when that child comes home from school, the parent asks the child for money. Where has no, that parent doesn't has a job and the child doesn't have a job. Where on earth will the child get money? And also at times in our community, we know of these kind of activities that are taking place, but the laws are there, but they're not properly enforced. If we go to the station, for example, and report it, first thing the police are going to say are that, okay, you need to write a report, and then when you file a report, you're going to take another minute. I know of cases like these. And then it was one day I said to the parents, so what, you're not going to stop this? And the, and the parents said to me, uh, turned to me and said, that I don't care, she's turned up big woman, let you understand big woman things. My name is Nevan Stewart, and to all the police out there who are, who are abusing the children and not doing their job to serve, protect, and reassure, I advise you to stop doing that. Uh, if you are doing it and not want to stop it, I advise you to leave the force. I know of a lady that had five children. She didn't take care of them, but when she wants money, she asks the father, is like, I need money to send my child to school. When she gets the money, she used to buy her wig, the clothes, the shoes, and go to the latest parties, and come back with the gentleman in the same one-bedroom house, sleeping with the men, and the children are there sitting down hungry and can't do anything. Uh, the solution to all of this corruption and these ch parents neglecting their children, right? It all has to do with when are you going to stand up? Everybody is looking to their shoulders. When are you going to stand up? When are you going to stand up? But it's really when am I going to stand up and do this? Because it's everybody's perspective, I am waiting on somebody to do this. Or when I do this, I, police will lock me up on one bag of stuff. Because, for example, we have parents, right? And they're not doing anything about their children. In this example, right? Now we have this young lady talking up. This is the type of portal that we need from talk of youth to, to channel all of this, sorry, um, on, on, on television and social media and everything to get the word out there to tell them that, listen, poverty and all of this corruption is a problem. And as Mr. Morgan around the back there is said, said to us um, other days, venality is rife in Jamaica and it is a big problem. Um, what am um, I doing but it is what are we doing as a collective body because it is not um, going to be really you know it's not going to work if one person de decides to stand up 
everybody has to come and say, well, we are going to stop this. And you know, our next problem is in our communities, everyone is being afraid of being an informer. Being an informer, and I quote, an informer, it is not a bad thing, right? Everybody is saying that, well, me no say no, me no, because me no want nobody kill me. But if everybody does something, they can't kill us so much people. Everybody think about it. <laughs> they can't kill us so much people. So I think that everybody is supposed to come together and say that, okay, there's abuse here and we are going to stop it. Most parents look at their child or children and say, you're ugly, you're worthless, you're good for nothing. But if you are the parent and you can't be monkey, basically, you're a monkey too. <laughs> so... <laughs> no, raise your hands if you think that there should be a code for young men. There should be a national code that says what young men should be like. You believe that? Yes. You believe that you need something like that or the other youths around there? Yes. Raise your hand if you think there should be a code for what young girls should do and be like. A national code of ethics. Is that what I'm looking for? Put I think an issue, it's, an, it's a really unorthodox issue that youth face and many times you might be plagued by it and don't know is the fact that many of us are ignorant of what we go through and as a result we tend to not be able to find solutions to these problems. Case in point, when there are things that go on in our society and we stay blissfully ignorant as youth to these problems, it turns out that we end up repeating these problems later on when we move out of the youth stage into adult stage into, into grown men and women stayed, and this is a, is a major problem. I think that to curb this problem, what we can do is allow professionals, for, ins for instance, psychiatrists and psychologists, to come in to speak to youth, say, you may not know that this is happening to you, but this is really a problem, and you may not see it as wrong, but yes, it is wrong. So if you don't correct it, chances are you are going to repeat it, and youth after you are going to follow that example that you said. One of the solutions is that the parents should encourage their youth in more achieving their goals. One of the solutions is that we as citizens, we need to stop blaming the government for everything. We need to stop saying that she's not doing this, oh, she's using our money to go and overseas and all that. We need to know that she goes overseas to please us as citizens. So we need to stop blaming her and try to work, work with her and make Jamaica a better place for us as youth who will be the future generation. Again, I want to say that to all parents, um, it's best to try very hard to grow your child in the proper way. And if you know that you weren't grown properly to grow your child in the proper way, seek help. There are counselors and there are other people that can help you to grow your child in the proper way. My mother always said to me, never be where I am, be better than I am. And for that, I'm saying to all parents, all parents out there who are abusing their children, who are not doing good to their children, I'll give you my mother's name, Rosemary Lewis Wilson. Please call her, she will counsel you because she is the greatest mom. To all the youth, it is my duty to encourage you to find within yourself that, that light, that form of hope that exists that can better this nation. Find it wherever it is within you. And if you cannot, find somebody who can help you to find it. Say it, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I am powerful. My voice is my power. My voice is my power. On a door, shut me up. On a door, shut me up. I'm intelligent. I'm intelligent. I can reason. I can reason. 